Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my Friday message, five minutes of news you can use. So let's start with latest COVID news. Last week, the FDA authorized the use of a third dose of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for children aged 12 to 15. They also narrowed the interval for booster shot eligibility to five months from six for all those eligible to receive a booster. A third shot for children aged five through 11 who are immunocompromised was also authorized. As we know, COVID-19 vaccination, which includes boosters, remains the most effective way to protect against serious infection. Evidence continues to demonstrate high level efficacy against all variants in preventing severe illness, hospitalization and death, especially with the addition of a booster. COVID activity driven now almost exclusively by Omicron variant continues to surge throughout the country as well as locally. More than 25,000 new cases were diagnosed this past Wednesday in North Carolina, and more than 4,000 individuals across our state are currently hospitalized with COVID. While ICU admissions are also trending up, fortunately, it's not at the proportional rate of cases seen in previous surges. Within our health system, there are now over 300 patients with COVID, an all-time high, but fortunately, a very small number requiring ICU care and ventilation. The vast majority of those severely ill are unvaccinated. Throughout the state, about 74% of adults have received at least one vaccination and 70% are fully vaccinated. We still have room to go there. And throughout the Southeast, 99% of our new cases are the Omicron variant. We continue to see a high number of our workforce out with COVID and our health system colleagues are currently struggling with more than 700 out due to active COVID infection, quarantine, or pending a test. Our colleagues continue to do an amazing job of providing care for our patients despite these enormous challenges. And I think I can represent all of us in the school in expressing our deep admiration and gratitude for all that they're doing. Some good news is that some areas of the country that experienced this surge early, like New York City, are now showing signs that they may have reached the peak with rates of new cases hitting a plateau. And this is what we're hoping happens here as well very soon. Keeping our faculty, staff, students, and trainees healthy is essential to our ability to continue to provide care to our patients in our community and continue, continue in our education and research missions. An important strategy in addition to vaccination and boostering is masking, and it is reasonable to upgrade one, one's mask in the face of Omicron, which clearly has enhanced infectivity, making certain masks less effective. So this includes a well-fitting mask, including N95s, KN95s, or surgical masks, which can be more tightly secured either with adjustable earbands or wearing a cloth mask over it. These types of masks are more effective than cloth masks and are much preferred currently. In addition to their fit, they are layered with material that hold an electrostatic charge that traps the viral-laden particles. We would also encourage maintaining distance in public places and avoid eating or drinking near others. Importantly, if you have cold-like symptoms, please stay home and isolate. And just a reminder, the five top symptoms associated with Omicron include a runny nose, sore throat, headache, fatigue, and sneezing, but you also may experience additional flu-like symptoms like fever and muscle aches. If you have these symptoms during this current outbreak, please stay home as there's a high probability that you do have COVID. And for individuals who too, do test positive for COVID, we are following the CDC guidelines. If you're fully vaccinated, including a booster, isolate for five days. If you continue to experience symptoms after five days, you should extend this isolation to 10 days. However, if after five days, you're no longer experiencing symptoms or you never had symptoms, you can come off isolation but you should wear that tight fitting mask that I suggested earlier for an additional five days. And importantly, if you are unvaccinated and test positive, isolate for 10 days. Together, we will get through this. I know that many people in our school and throughout our community are really struggling. So many of our colleagues are dealing with, not only with the challenges at work, but navigating isolation, childcare, and aging parent responsibilities, all are causing enormous stress. Please take care and be kind to one another, particularly to our providers in the health system who repeatedly have stepped up to care for all of our loved ones. Now, let me pivot for a moment to share some good news. Four School of Medicine faculty members have been selected to receive the 2022 Physician Scientist Strong Start Awards. 
The School of Medicine Award Program supports promising early career physician scientists at Duke. It's funded with a gift from the Nanal and H. Duke Fund. This year's recipients are Nicholas DeVito, Department of Medicine, Samuel Francis, Department of Surgery, Lindsay Rain, Department of Medicine, and Jeffrey Ross, Department of Pediatrics. Congratulations to all this year's outstanding recipients. I want to end by recognizing Martin Luther King Jr. Day. On Monday and every day, we can all honor Dr. King's dream of seeking justice and equity with our own institutional walls and in our surrounding communities. Thank you to our faculty, staff, and students for your hard work through our Moments to Movement initiative to advance our commitment to become more diverse, equitable, and an anti-racist institution. We are making progress and must continue this important work. Yesterday, you received a message from Kevin Thomas, our Vice Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. His message included a number of activities and events planned as noted on this slide. I encourage all of us to find meaningful ways to remember and honor Dr. King's vision. Finally, as I do each week, I want to thank all of our faculty, staff, and students for your resolve to protect yourselves, your loved ones, our healthcare workers, and our community. Your commitment to helping others has not gone unnoticed and is so appreciative. I'll be back soon to share more information.